I'm Kimberly from the Fat Quarter Shop, and I have Melissa Mortensen from Polka Dot Chair. She's a Rally Blake fabric designer. So we're just gonna like show all her fun stuff, and then you can ask questions. So I'm gonna start with this new quilt sew along, and she's gonna just tell you a little bit about it. And if you wanna see up close a little bit better, um, jump off the Instagram and hop on YouTube. Okay. So, um, the quilt, like the whole collection is kind of inspired by like home and kind of like that farmhouse kind of style of stuff. And so I just designed the quilt. I love making star quilt blocks. And so it's like a variation of star blocks and then um, some house blocks to kind of like give you that kind of home feeling with it. And my favorite part is um, these words are part of the side of a panel. So it looks like you did applique, but you did it, but you can't tell. So it's like cheater. Yeah. Cheater. Yeah. And so this will be coming out this spring and we are going to have quilt kits and then she's going to host a sew along on her blog um, so that y'all can like sew along. And then we're going to have videos on every single step, um, which is one thing that I know all of you guys really like. Um, so we filmed that today. We're going to have some bag videos. I'm gonna show you some other stuff too. This is, I'm gonna open it. Her Let's Be Mermaids, and this is in stock now. Yeah, this one came out in November. So. And um, I'm gonna try to thumb through the fabrics just so y'all can like see. There's like little seahorses. Um, the rose gold is really nice and um, it, this fabric sold really well. And she also did the collection Derby and Derby Days. Those were some of her past collections. And so we've got like yardage, we've got all kinds of pre-cuts. And then the panel is, oh my gosh, like for real. The panel is really fun. <laughs> yeah. Good design. I like how with her panels you can do like pillows or cheater quilts. Do I need to be closer? No, you're perfect. Like you could just quilt this. Or you could, yeah. And there's like a quilt pattern that I'm, that you guys have. It's called the Starbright quilt, and it's actually designed for those specific size squares. So you can put them like in the middle of the star block, and then make a quilt just using the panel too. Mm -hmm. There, that's super cute. And then um, let's. Oh, these are so cute. So these, I'm gonna show you. Well, this one, mine's over there. <laughs> um, I have a bunch of these, and I actually didn't know that Melissa designed them. And I have all my cross stitch in them or um, and my binding and stuff. And she's actually the one who designed them. So there's six of them. Let me see. Measure twice, cut once, sharp objects. This one's cute. Quilting is my cardio. Mad seamstress. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is the one that I have, I think. Yep. Yeah, that's the one that I have. And so I think it's really cool because I had no idea that she designed these and she thought I just was, because I was yeah, I just had it today. <laughs> yeah, she thought I just like, like had it to impress her. And I was like, no, I use them. It's true. So, and this is, is this the bag we're going to do? Yeah, so we're going to do the bag. So the next line also has a panel that comes with it. Um, but the panel squares are a little bit bigger. So this is just like super basic beginner tote bag. And then we've used one of the pieces of the panel of the next line. Fox Farm, and that just made a pocket. It's so cute. Of it. Oh, I'm so excited. I know, so cute. Then we got pillows. So this is like a good way to show. Um, yeah. So this actually, so this is this is an old. This tutorial has been on my site on for, her blog for a long time, like since like probably 2009. And it's um, a reading pillow that I designed for my nephews. I gave it to him for Christmas, and it has a pocket in the front. So I'll just like grab a book. So the idea is like for kids or for adults, um, you can just slide your book in the front and put it in there. And I gifted it to my nephews that year with a little flashlight and like bedtime stuff so they could like read in bed. So we're gonna show a tutorial on how to make the reading pillow. And this is a great way to use her panels where um, it looks like applique, but it's not. Yeah, so cute. And I love how all of her stuff has rose gold in it. And then this is, um, this is Fox Farm. So this is the same collection as the quilt we showed at the beginning. And I'll just kind of show some fabrics. Mm 
I'm at a good spot. Yes. These are just strike off, so. Um, nope, those are the real ones. Okay, these are the real ones, yeah, but, we, got them. <laughs> but we don't have it at Fat Quarter Shop. It's not here yet. When will it be here? It's coming in March. So I think it's really close because I usually get. Piggy's my... not on here. Where's Piggy? Oh, there's no Piggy. No Piggy. Sorry. I, no, I usually get mine a couple of weeks before it starts, so I think it's close. Mm -hmm. Sometime in March. And I keep forgetting it's almost the middle of February. So. I know. I can't even believe. There's little foxes. I can't even believe it's February. It's like my life is just passing right in front of my eyes. Mm -hmm. So these are little foxes on the circles. Oh, I love the foxes. And there's, yeah, the little dogs. So this is gonna be, this is kind of an up close. And what she did in the quilt, you'll see, like, um, sh and she shows it in the video, it's like how you can fussy yeah. cut different things to put yeah. in so the like, um, stars and yeah. stuff. So these have like the, so it's just like at home, I'm making a big mess. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can see we've got like the house in the middle of those and stuff too. And then, yeah, we're going to do this basket, which actually, it needs a little ironing, but anyway, so <laughs> it's a simple little basket, put on your table, throw fabric scraps in. I actually have one, have one this size that I keep for scraps, and then a smaller one that I put like binding clips and stuff in, so we're going to film that this afternoon. So yes. we have a oh, lot of questions. Okay. Oh, we kind of so went fast. Long. I'm sorry. I just had a hot chocolate, so yeah, sorry. <laughs> She's all energized. Sugar. Uh, no, sugar. People are like, is this a block of the month? Where do I get that quilt? When are we sewing? So the quilt will be a quilt kit, and we ordered a ton of them. But just like everything, once it's gone, it's gone. So I have a ton on order, and when it comes in, we're going to sell it. It's just going to be a quilt kit in that kit is going to have the printed pattern. They're actually going to download the pattern. Oh, they're so gonna, they're not going to yeah. have a like, like a code. A code to yeah. download because it has some uh, paper piecing templates and stuff that yeah. you'll need to print. And then if you don't buy the kit, you can buy the pattern separately also. And of course, you can get all of that at the back quarter shop. So she's going to plan the sew along like um, April-ish like April so that yeah. all the stores um, have time to get the goods in and then all of you guys have the time to buy all the goods from the stores and then um, she'll have a detailed list on her blog and of course we will on ours too. Yeah, so we'll post like all the dates. It'll be like every other week because you make like 10 blocks at a time mm -hmm. and I just don't want you to feel like you have like a lot to do and you're really rushed. So it'll probably be like every other week we'll just like pace it out and stuff. It'll start sometime in April. And they're rows. So yeah. like some of the rows you make twice and then the middle row you just make once. Um, but it's all very it's very beginner friendly and I know like a lot of you guys that's one of the questions you always ask is is it beginner friendly and it totally is and I love um because y'all know I don't like applique so like I love anything that I can look like applique because like, like even Kevin he works here but he would totally think like I applique it because he wouldn't <laughs> know um are you doing pre-orders for the cool kit I don't remember I don't think so I don't think so. I think it's just a. I think it's just a click, and then we'll email you when it comes in. Mm -hmm. So that's just as good because then you get it, and then you can order it, and then you can add stuff to your order if you want, or like if you think you need an applique pin or whatever. And what was the name of the quilt again? It's called the Let's Stay Home Quilt. And there's also a backing set, and we don't have the pattern information up yet, like for PDF. That's not available yet. So all of it will be like March. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we'll make sure you have like plenty of time, like to get supplies and like all that kind of stuff. I don't want, like, cause I personally, when I do stuff like this, I don't want to feel rushed. Right. So we'll make sure there's like timing and no one feels like they don't have time to catch up or they get behind and stuff, so. Um, uh, one of our YouTube people, James Smith says, Kimberly, it looks like you'll you'll be getting my tax return this year. Oh, <laughs> at least you get a return and you don't have to pay. Hey. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay, we have more questions. Uh, oh, that, that was all the questions we have so far. Um, can you tell us, Melissa, a little bit more of why it's called Let's Stay Home? Like, where did your inspiration come from for that? So I designed the fabric, which was is called Fox Farm, and um, 
I was trying to think of a quilt to go with it and it was kind of the line was inspired like a little bit by like the English countryside because I had been watching lots of Netflix like British TV shows um, and so I just it was like after the winter and I'd spent all this time inside watching and so I was kind of inspired by that and then I was trying to think of like a quilt to go with it and I kept thinking of home and houses and um, we had just kind of gone through a phase where we'd been traveling a lot and it was fun traveling and some work traveling and um, my husband had asked me like let's go such and such here this weekend and I thought oh my gosh can't wait let's, like, let's just stay home <laughs> yeah because I was so tired and just you yeah. know ready to rest so then I thought oh well, it would be a fun name for a quilt because I like to design like when I design fabric or I do like quilts or even like these little bags I like to do things like a little kind of like funny or you know different a little with a little bit of like a quirk so I just thought it would be kind of like a funny like I don't want to go anywhere I just want to stay home <laughs> I want to stay home and sew or whatever so it was kind of like inspired by that I love that I feel that in my heart <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> um I don't have any other questions coming in yet uh if anyone that has a question like about the quilt or Melissa's fabrics like feel free to ask um I'm going to ask a popular question we tend to get, uh, is how did you get started in quilting? So I, um, when I was in high school, we still had home ec in school and I took, I had a really great home ec teacher and, um, we did sewing and by the time my senior year had come, I had finished most of my like academic classes. Um, and so I took sewing for two periods a day, because <laughs> I can't believe they let me do that. But, um, I still graduated with honors and all this stuff. But anyway, um, and one of our units was quilting. So we made a quilt and um, I did that and I kind of put all the sewing stuff. I graduated high school and kind of put everything away. And then I went to college and I majored in molecular biology and I just didn't have time to sew and quilt and I, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I had kids and my oldest daughter came and I was still working full time and then I had a set of twins that came and I ended up at home a lot <laughs> because with twins they were babies and you can't do much else besides like sit on the floor and watch them <laughs> and make sure they don't get into something so I had a lot of time on my hands so I did a lot of English smocking I did like the hand smocking where I would do like little mm -hmm. smock dresses and then quilts and then I um, about that time they started getting a little older, blogging was kind of starting to be a thing and I had a friend that started a blog and she was sharing like sewing projects she did and I thought, oh, that sounds like a fun idea. So I started one too and just kind of grew from there. So that was like 2007, 2008, so. That's awesome. Uh, we have a question from one of our YouTube members, Teresa. She's asking, how long does it take for a fabric line from conception to in the shop? So. Uh, all of mine have been a little bit different um, depending on like how far ahead I am and then depending like they want to time it so like Christmas fabric you don't want Christmas fabric to come out in November you want Christmas fabric to come out in May so a lot of it has to do with when they want to slot it in because they have so many lines they like to really set a time but usually it's at least a year um, and I um, I don't have a formal background in graphic design and like all the computer programs so I had to self teach myself like illustrator and all the stuff that you have to do to draw it and make it so for me sometimes I feel like it takes longer because I have to like I get stuck and I have to google it <laughs> um, but usually it's about a year I think the quickest one we've done I think we maybe did nine months once but that was really rushing it but usually concept like the very first concept to coming out is usually I say average 18 months it's pretty close to average so the stuff you're seeing now is like the mermaid stuff was stuff I drew two summers ago like not last summer the summer before that and it shipped to stores in November yeah so that one I think I turned in the files like I think I turned in the files like in June which I like I feel like bad saying that next thing my I think I was like literally like at because they're really strict with their deadlines so when they say they need it like they need it so I think I was really close to the edge of the deadline with that when I turned them in like in June so it's like a year and a half after that um, and lots of people are asking uh, the panel with the words like thankful, blessed, uh, where oh, can yeah. they get that? So it's, do you want me to go get it? Because we have it over here, yeah. but I feel I'll like we it. just didn't grab it. I'll yeah. get it. So the panel is going to be in the kit. So it comes in the kit if you buy the quilt kit. Um, and Kim's grabbing it. Is that the one that I cut or is that the one? I think yeah, that's the full that's one. Yeah. Full yeah. Um, and can they get the panel if it's like outside of the kit? Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's just sold like it's, it's so the it's upside down. 
So it's she uh, did the same thing when she was filming. I did. <laughs> I, I, I had actually I think I had the whole quilt out there even once. So yeah, so it's one yard. So it's just like a yard of fabric. So it's a little bit wider than some panels. And then tell them about this. Okay, so if you want, so okay, so you can cut it up and make bags. But the other thing I did is so I made it so that this between here and here is a half inch. So if you just fold it on the dotted line and iron it and stitch it with a quarter inch seam allowance and you do it going this way and you do it going that way, then you need to make a cheater quilt. And it looks like you stitched it yeah, together. Because you don't have to cut you, it apart. Yeah, because you would just fold it like this. Yeah, fold it like on the line. On the line. Let me see if I can do it. Fold it on the line, stitch with a quarter inch seam. And then when you open it, it you don't see the black line. Yeah. And then you're, it looks like you piece the yeah. stars. And if you do do that, like I would do like the up and down ones. And then before you do like the side to side, I would just go in and clip the seam allowance. On the back. On the back. Yeah, so it'll lay down flat. Mm -hmm. But those are designed like the blocks. They're 12 inches before finishing. So it's 11 and a half inches. And then this finish. is the applique part that look the cheater applique. And mm -hmm. then she has instructions on how to make the cheater quilt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And little app, little instructions on how to make the pillow if you want yeah, to turn it just into do a like pillow. a simple pillow, like a little welcome pillow. Yeah, and you can do like the that. same thing with the mermaid. Yeah. So the mermaid, let's be mermaid. Yeah. So the mermaid I also designed to be a cheater. Um, so I tried to space out like where there was like stripes and where there's scallops and where there's color so that if you did go ahead and sew it on the lines that it would look like a nice little cheater quilt. So this actually size wise this one's wider. So this one would be a really nice cheater to do this and then maybe put like a four inch border all the way around and you've got like a really cute little quilt. So yeah and if your friends don't quilt they don't know that you didn't yeah. do anything. <laughs> We well, still sewed seams. You just didn't cut it apart first. <laughs> yeah. So we did sewn. Real quick, today we have three new members. One of Yay. them, we have Lori Lattenmore, me, Enos, and then James Smith just joined right now. Yay! So welcome to the group, you guys. Um, and I don't know if y'all noticed, but like my glasses are broke. <laughs> so I'm just oh, gonna yeah. like bring that Story to the time. table. I woke up today and I just like. I don't know, they're broken. So I've got to get them fixed because I cannot see their bifocals, so they're like a mess. I didn't notice till she turned around, guys. Anyways, yeah. That's just like my day. And I tried to tape them, like when she was filming this morning, I was like, I'm gonna go down there, I'm gonna try to fix them. I couldn't fix them, so I was like, forget it. Forget it, I'm just gonna like hope this side doesn't come off because I'm blind as a bat. Cannot see if they're not, like I can't. If, if I didn't have my glasses, yeah. I could not. Yeah. I don't think I could work because I can't see up close. That's the problem. So it's for all for up close? Like I can't see far away. If I have my well, I can't see either. Yeah. But like I can see like medium. Yeah. But not like. In the middle. <laughs> I can see that way too. I was like right here. You can see me. That's <laughs> called I'm over 40. Uh, <laughs> Teresa says it's like opera glasses for Kimberly. Something. Like, well, this stick, one should get you, you know? a stick yeah, from the other little, side. You uh, can hold it. <laughs> Yeah, but I did want to tape them, but um, yeah. That's really funny. It's just the, I bought them at Lens Crafters and it's like really far from here. So I can't like just run and fix it. But they're going to be fixed before tomorrow because I'm doing cross stitch. And you know what I was thinking? I was like, yeah, I have to get them fixed because I put my little, I use these little clip-on lights. Oh, yeah. And there would be nowhere to clip them. Yeah. And maybe that's why they broke. Maybe. You need to get like a second pair so then you have like cross stitch glasses. I should. the clips. And then you have your other glasses. <laughs> Um, let's see, we have a question from Catherine on YouTube. She says, hello from South Greenland. How do you come up with the colors you use? Um, so I, so I, I kind of, so the way I work is first I kind of come up with like a general theme and then colors are always second for me. So um, that's just kind of how I work. Like when I think of the theme, I think of what colors it would be and what the feel is. Usually one of the first things I pick is like whether I want to use navy or black um, and that's then kind of go from there. And I, I, I've kind of gotten now I've done like eight lines. So I have like a favorite pink and I have like a favorite mint and stuff, but I try and like mix it up each time. So I go to Target, I look at like the dishes at Target. I try like really hard to get inspiration from other places than just like fabric and quilting. Cause I feel like you can like bring it in and get a lot of inspiration from things. And I love, like I was talking earlier to Lily, I love Disney. So I kind of sometimes start with a oh. Disney movie as an inspiration point. So like Fox that Farm is all inspired. all really cares about is Disney. Yes. And she, I can't relate, cause I don't like, I you don't, don't like know, it. like, well, I don't know. I don't want Have to you movie. been? Yeah, like, I've been all of them. Oh, okay. I think it's the worst vacation because it costs a lot of money 
And I have a thing, like I have to have Starbucks. There's no Star they have Starbucks there. The line is too long. It is long. <laughs> but you know, you can order now. So now they have like mobile, I don't know if they have it at the Starbucks, but like at the food at Disney, you can order on your phone mm -hmm. now. So you don't have to wait. And so if you're smart and you bring your phone, you can order it and then you get to go to the front of the line. The I don't know. Yeah. I like, I like it, but like my kids, they're at that age where they just want to get on all the rides. Well, that's great. But my husband will not get on the twirly rides because he'll oh, get sick. Either. So then I do it. And then I want to do the like roller coaster. So then I'm like, I'm done. Like after a certain couple of hours, you're just like, as a parent, you're like, I can't do this. I'm way too old. So it's kind of one of those things that like I go and I just feel like an old lady and I just. See, yeah. I like to go. So I like, I like the rides, obviously, but I just, I think just like, there's really super creative people that work there. Oh, yeah, and absolutely. so I love like the shops and the merchandise. And See, my kids don't want any part of that. Yeah. And, and I got to do what my kids want. Yeah. Well, yours, like my, so we've been going since they were little and now they're like my youngest are 17 have twins. And so they, when they go they're you know, they're 17. So actually half the time, if we go down during a school break, they have friends down there and they just ditch us. So we are like, <laughs> <laughs> just don't around. Have <laughs> Kids are 17 and they ditch us. So. That's funny. Sorry, Teresa made a comment. She's like, hey, some of us are actually old ladies saying that you're Oh, old. you're not. <laughs> Neither of you are old. Well, it's just. I, it's just like my body like I, I want it's like you want to do the stuff and then you do it and you're like I don't feel like I can do this. Oh, you know, I get yeah like, Well, even like when we go down we'll go like during the school break and we'll go for a week And like the first day it's like one o'clock in the morning and we're like going strong And then like by the third day like trying to get anybody out of bed before 11 a.m. Is just not because yeah, it's you want to do it, but yeah, you're it's it's a physically taxing vacation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and question from Teresa, she says, because of the lead time and design and release, how do you anticipate what's going to be popular when you design fabric? So, um, I, so I have three kids. I have a 23 year old daughter. Um, she's graduated from college and then I have twins, boy girl twins that are 17 and graduating high school this year. And, um, I pay attention to what they're looking at and what they're doing and what they're buying in stores. And, um, like my 23 year old, in particular she's really good at like noticing a trend coming up she really pushed me with like the fox for this she's like you gotta do a fox um and then like the mermaid line it was inspired by my daughters like and her friends swimming at our pool in the summer because like if you have like we have a pool and if you have a pool you have to like watch people and like you're literally just sitting watching people in the pool and so yeah. my mind started to wander so a lot it's really inspired by my kids and i try and see what they're doing like what's what did they when we went to Target what did they like at Target and yeah. sometimes I hit it on and sometimes I don't so it's just best guess but quilting usually like it usually the trend comes second to quilting I think sometimes mm -hmm. too so it's kind of got to keep your eye open and Anna Corinne on YouTube was asking what size is the quilt um, the panels when you make it like a cheater quilt so it would probably be like 34 by 34 yeah. or something like that because you would have wide. it's 36 inches wide and then you would cut then you're gonna lose then you would lose you're gonna lose yeah half. I would say 33 to 34 inch square yeah. something like that it won't be perfectly square um, of course you could like if you were making it and you wanted it to be perfectly square you could just like finagle the borders which yeah. sounds like something I would do with my OCD ness so yeah, I wouldn't care if it's square but I guess everybody's like different. So yeah. <laughs> if it's off by like a little bit, I'm okay. But I always just tell people like, if you're happy with it in the end, then it's good. That's so, but yeah, so yeah. it's a yard, it's 36 inches. So once you take out your seam allowance. And you could stuff. like technically make it bigger. Like you could do four of them together. So another thing I did that I'm working on at home, um, which I, it's not done yet, is I took a panel and I cut them up all the squares and mm -hmm. then I took a layer cake or a 10 inch stacker oh. and I cut the 10 inch stacker all at once down to nine inches by nine inches and I alternated one stacker and one panel that's piece and made a twice as big. That's a good idea. Yeah. So once I, when I get that done, I'll put it up on the blog. I just yeah, have lots of things <laughs> working on. Um, and all these pillows that we're seeing on the table, are you going to show us how to make them? And if so, do yes. you make them with an envelope back or with a zipper? Yeah. So we're going to do a video of how I like to do the zipper backs. So they both have zipper backs and it's like a cheater way that I do it and it works for me. So I, that's how I do all my pillow backs. And I like to show the zipper. So I usually will like just make sure I buy like a colorful zipper or a white zipper. Like this one, I wish I had had like a bright green zipper or something. I think it would look pretty in the back, but I just went with white. So. 
Okay. Um, and just a quick shout out, we have more new YouTube members. Thank you. Um, let's see, it's Paula Shipley and Amelyn. Welcome to the group, everyone. Awesome. Um, and then Anna Curran was asking, do you have anything with angels in it? I do not have anything with angels, but mm -hmm. definitely put that in the back of my head. I just turned in another line, so I'm trying to start thinking about the next, next one. Yes, you yeah. always kind of have to, it takes me a while, so I kind of have to keep, keep an eye out for stuff. And how many prints do you normally have in a fabric collection? So um, the most I've had is eight. And then usually it's between six and eight. Uh, my very first fabric collection came out in 2014 and it was only three prints. But then with colors, it's how many? Nine with colors. So so Riley Blake always does three different colorways. So 21 skews. So 21, yeah, skews. We try not to do, I try and make sure like scale wise, like I have like a large scale and a small scale and then a geometric so that when you put it together in a quilt and also like you don't want too many blues and you don't right. want too many pinks because when you start sewing with it, you need to be able to pull so that it looks nice when it's like all put together. Yeah, I was gonna bring like her board, but we did something with it. I don't know what we did with it, but there's like a poster board, storyboard. And the way Riley Blake does it is, you know, they'll have like a navy blue, a pink, a white, or they divide it up so that you can like really see how the colors are divided. Yeah. I kind of did it, but um, they always do 21 SKUs, seven, 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 plus a panel sometimes. Yeah. Depending then, on if the designer does a panel. And like the mermaid panel, there's a light and a dark. But when we went to pull the dark, somebody bought it on an order, so we kind of need to ship their order. So <laughs> there's another color, but it was getting cut for an order. Well, and I did the dark, like I did the light first. So I'm like, can you do a dark version? I'm like, that's not going to work very well. And it has a navy background, and then it came, it's and pretty. I like it way better. I mean, yeah, I like them both, but I really like the navy version. Yeah, so. it's pretty. And they're really good. Like, all of a sudden, it's hard because you work on your own, and so you'll spend all this time in front of the computer, and I draw on my iPad, and I'll think, oh, this is so cute, but you just have no idea. So. I have someone at Riley Blake that I talk to and I'll send her stuff. I'm like, am I crazy? Am I on to something? And she'll give me good feedback with stuff like that. So the part of what takes so long to design a fabric collection, at least for me, is the going back and forth to decide on the theme and the colors and stuff because it'll change a lot from when I send my first sketches to when it goes. Mm -hmm. And some design, everyone works different. Some designers like send it the first time and it's perfect the first time and they don't change anything, but I always have to change a lot of things. I'm still learning, so I've done eight lines. I guess at some point I need to say I figured it out. So, um, and was fabric design something you've always wanted to do? So, I um, so I majored in molecular biology in college, and I did not think I was like art artistic. Um, I so earlier and I like to do like creative things but um, my husband at the time was majoring in industrial design in college we had gotten married like senior year and we had a summer term that he said um, let's take an art class together they have like oil painting you know and it was a night class we went to Brigham Young and stuff and I was like I can't paint I'm not artsy <laughs> and he was artsy and stuff and so he talked me into taking it and I took the class and just like really loved it and I loved working with the paints and the colors and I just had like a couple of professors that summer that were really encouraging and so I started oil painting after that. And her and daughter, tell them about your daughter and how she does the like, the Oh bond. yeah, so I have, so my younger daughter, she has started, I think my kids since, my husband was creative, he's a dentist now, but he was creative and then with me, my kids have kind of picked it up. So my youngest daughter has started doing like a lot of hand lettering for me and I actually have a request, I have an idea for a fabric line that I need a hand letter print, so I have a request to her. So we'll see, I told her I would like, I'm like, if I take it, then I'll, you know, I'll put your name on it and stuff. But so she's, she does, I have a Cricut machine and we make lots of our own t-shirts. And so she's been hand lettering like designs for t-shirts for us and stuff too. So getting everybody involved and so I think she's going to look into like graphics in college or something for it. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So. All right and then Sue Taylor says, hi when putting a quilt together how do you ladies match colors? You're probably more um, I you. used to be really scared of color um, and so I would only stick with like one collection. That's it. But now what I found like is just I buy what you like. So if I like a bundle, I'll just buy it and I keep them all together. And I, I, I tend to lean towards the same color families. And then if I want to do something, they're just all there. But I only work, I just, whatever you like, 
I feel like I just buy stuff that I yeah. like and it all goes together and just don't be afraid to like mix and match but if you're scared like at first I would only use one collection I would never veer to out but now like when I use Lori's collection like the quilt that I'm doing that's her free she's like a free sew along thing going on I'll use like our current collection but I have all her old collection and I'll just pull from it which is yeah. something I would never do like years before um, so I think it's just all about like finding what you like and you don't have to buy a ton of it and saving like your leftovers. So like my leftovers, I had made a table runner out of her autumn love, but I still had it. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna mix that in. So it's just, you know, doing what you like, I think. Yeah. Well, or, and I think too, like for me quilting wise, when I got like a design wall, you know, like the ones that you can hang up, like I mm -hmm. just had a blank wall and I hung one of those design wall things mm -hmm. up. And if you start with stuff and if you work a little bit at a time, if you put it up on the wall and walk back, I think it helps you a lot too because a lot of times I'll think like colors will go together and then I'll put them up and I'll walk back like oh that's not working and stuff like that so that has helped me a ton and then especially if you just like work one block at a time you can audition colors you can be like oh that pink's too dark or yeah I used to, to use that. electric quilts more than I use now just to like test color because I used to be so like oh I gotta make sure it's perfect and like for example I made one of the blocks and I don't really love how it came out like the reds next to the green and I it's because my mom was at my house and I was like talking to her, I was having a conversation so I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. But then I put it together and I was like, it's not exactly what I wanted, but in the whole big scheme of the quilt, yeah, I'm not gonna notice that. Yeah. And so I kinda like, if I don't love, love, love something, I'll just go with it. Yeah, well and that's why I was like, work. yeah, cause I get people email me all the time and they're like, I don't know where to start this or do this. And I'm like, just make it, you'll love it. And if like, if it's a disaster, then just, put it in a box like it doesn't matter like I've made lots of things that I just were like oh that was not the best but eh, just move on make something else so yeah yeah um and we have even more members joining yeah um, thank you so let's see it's Monica Cox and Carly and a lot of people in the YouTube comments right now are asking a lot of questions about membership um I can answer those after the live stream yeah guys. so she'll answer that like in the comments yeah uh, and let's see, uh, lots of people were also suggested that you go to Disney World without your kids so that yes, you guys I, can try um, it. Oh, gosh, if if I'm going anywhere without my kids, I'm going to Vegas. <laughs> oh, really? See, I, I, Tina, I have mixed, I'm not a huge Vegas fan. I mean, I don't dislike I it. I could go but. to Vegas and sit at a blackjack table for uh -huh. 25 hours straight and not get up. And don't ask me how many times I've done that. <laughs> but I haven't been to Disney since, um, I mean Disney, I haven't been to Vegas since, um, gosh, six or seven years we went like we have we have season passes to Disney and we were looking for somewhere to go for our vacate for our anniversary and we have like a direct flight from our house that didn't take a lot of airline miles so we went for our anniversary a couple years ago and my kids gave me like the hardest time they're like we think you're so dumb you're going to Disney without us and but it was fun like there's really yeah. nice restaurants there so we would like yeah. we went and just did, we did the nicer restaurants and we didn't have to like you know keep them happy it was fun yeah so. and I can't honestly like I can't imagine going on a vacation without my kids because my kids are like into so many things when they're that, younger too you know when they're a little bit bigger I am going to the cross stitch show which I mean that's kind of like a vacation it's obviously work but it's enjoyable but yeah yeah and we might be going to Vegas because there's a like a oh yeah but if they they want to go to some conference and I'm like sure we'll go but I'm not going to anything Y'all, I'll pay for y'all to go, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not gonna go to any of that. You can find me at one. So do you do well at blackjack? No. Like, oh, I was like, because I do chicken to gamble. Because yeah, no. I'm like, I mean, I'll like, do like quarter slots, and I was like, no. those two. <laughs> no, there's like a method to it though, yeah. and I like stick to it. I never like lose a lot. I never win a lot. It's yeah. just, it's more just like I like to people watch. I don't really like to talk to people though, but it's fun to like watch and like, yeah. Like you can just watch people, it's relaxing. You don't have to talk to anybody, you get free drinks, even if it's just like Coke or water, people are bringing you stuff. Like, I don't know, I think it's just kind of, um, to me it's relaxing, which is weird, but it's yeah. just like my thing that I. The experience. Yeah, like I like to see the people walk I like by. To, I love like to people and like, watch. Like I love airports yeah. for that reason too. <laughs> and like people in Vegas like, like dress up. Yeah. Like they're dressed up and you're like, oh my gosh. And then if you like sit like by the fancy stores, you can like walk. I don't know. And they have like fancy stores that you go in like you would never buy something, but you can yeah. like see see it and you just be like, oh, look at all I love people. all the windows at the fancy stores. Like yeah. when we go on vacation, I'm always like looking at the windows and the displays because like they have super creative people that work there and yeah. they've got really great like 
there was a scarf in a window once that I took like a color scheme for fabric. <laughs> so I mean, it works yeah. and find inspiration everywhere. So, but. All right, um, and Sue Taylor was asking, the best way to preserve cotton fabrics besides using cedar? Can you suggest any remedy? I think she means like after you make it and you put it in a, like after, how you store oh, your quilts maybe when you're done. I, I don't know, so. I'm not. My quilts are like, I so just put them on a shelf. Mine are used, like I don't mean used, like I'll make a quilt for a line and then, or a holiday and it get, after I'm done like photographing it and if I need it for like shops or you know any kind of tour stuff then I put it on the couch and my kids use it. So I mean that may yeah. be so bad because that may be like some people I know don't like to do that but our, our quilts like get used and washed and yeah, like so. I have like three or four that I use, and then in my bedroom I just have this big rack that stuffs in, and then upstairs are all like my kids have probably like twenty quilts, and they can do whatever they know. I can wash them; yeah. they're like I don't care. And then there's some that like I don't really want touch, so I put them like in a cabinet, but sun isn't facing it. But there's really not that many that I don't. <laughs> and then we have a full cabinet downstairs here that has like I don't know how many quilts. Like at one point we had to start taking quilts out because there were so many in there. Well, and I think. Quilting cottons are so much higher quality too now that it might not be as big of an issue as if you're dealing with like antique quilts. And yeah, stuff. like with me, I'm kind of like I'm 44. If it gets messed up in 40 years, I'll probably be dead. So it's like <laughs> fine. Like I've made enough quilts. Some of them are gonna. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But I was having a conversation with somebody the other day because they were asking me about like museum glass on cross stitch, and I was like, well, like you don't have to do it. Like if. Like, yeah. Is it going to fade in your lifetime? Probably not. Yeah. When you die, what are people going to do? They're going to take it to Goodwill. Like, what are my kids going to do with all my stuff? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I want to know that too. Like, because I like make stuff for my blog and for fabric lines and stuff too. And we actually, we just, we're like reorganizing things. And my daughter helped me clean out a closet to put all the things I've made in it. And yeah, I wonder that too. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do with all these. I give tons of ways gifts, like when people need gifts for things. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, I always wonder what the rest of it. So, all right. Okay. Lots of questions coming in. Uh, Paula Shipley was uh, asking if you could do a line with anchors because she's a navy mom. Oh, so yeah, I, we did. I thought about doing anchors with the mermaids, so but we didn't. But um, Riley Blake does have. There's an anchor on the panel. Oh yeah, there's an anchor on the panel. And um, so if you are a navy mom, though, I do think Riley Blake has a line coming out called Harry and Alice. That's right. Go to sea. And yes. it's really cute. You might it's like it. By Amanda, Amanda. Harry. Yeah, Amanda Yeah, Harry. it's by Amanda And it's got reds, blues, and I think maybe greens. But yeah. I know it definitely has reds and blues. Yeah. And I, I do know that. I know there's an anchor, like, on, like, the logo, but I haven't, like, looked at the line, like, close enough I think it does. It does. Yeah, it like has, an um, the print that she has in it is, like, it's got scattered dots, and then every couple is, like, an anchor instead of a yeah. dot is what I think it is. Yeah. It's super cute. I could cute. be totally wrong, but, um. And do you have a favorite collection? Um, so I will say, like, personally, my favorite is probably Derby Day. I knew you were going to say that. I know, cause, but which has not been my most popular one. So It's been popular for us. Yeah, no, it's pop. Well, I mean, <laughs> relatively speaking. The one that was the most popular was the Wonderland with the bunnies, mm -hmm. which I had was like totally yeah. taken aback by. But I would say the Derby, and then honestly, I love the mermaid one. The first time I sent in the mermaid one, they weren't sure about it, because um, I had idea for a different line that had mermaids in it, and so I reworked it, and they weren't really sure, and I, there was one point with the mermaids that I was like, oh, I hope they take it, because I really like it. So I will say, I like the, part of why I like the mermaids is because I tried to draw more on it, so I actually drew the mermaid, because I just, I don't have a background in illustration, so like part of it is because I was kind of of myself that I was able to draw a mermaid. <laughs> yes. Drawing's like really hard. It is hard. Yes. Um, and how do you decide the colors on the lines? Um, so I I usually, I, I always have pink just because I love pink. And sometimes you have this green. Yes. You have this a the lot. Mint. The yeah. mint. Yeah. So the mint has been in it. I see a that, lot of your groups. Yeah. Almost all of them have had a pink and a mint. Um, and then I kind of pull from the other colors, but I do the color based on the mood. So like the line I just turned in, I picked all the colors based on what I felt like the mood was that I wanted it to have. So like okay. mermaids, these are brighter with the greens and the teals because it was summery. So I feel like summer colors, so. And then I did like, this is the first, the Fox Farm is the first time I did red because I felt like the red, white, and blue kind of reminded me of 
like English, like you guys are fans of like Cat Kitson and stuff. She does like lots of red, white, and blues and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. So. Um, and then Enjoy MJK on YouTube says, if you don't mind, is a, design, is a designer play paid a flat amount for a collection? Do you make commission? And she's like, I understand if you don't want to answer that. Oh no, I don't mind. Um, we are paid. I guess it's considered a commission. So it's based on how much you sell, and it's it's. A, different and so if you have a line that doesn't do well then yeah. you don't make anything and um, the hard part is when you first get started you it'll take you a year and a half from when you draw it to when it comes out and then it can take three to six months after that to get a check so until you get going you're kind of working up, upside down for a little while so yeah but that's how I work I feel like most that's of the all people the I've talked to all the companies way. do that yeah, yeah. It's just like book sales. Like if you yeah. did a book, you get a certain percentage, and you agree on that percentage with your publisher. Yeah, that kind of thing. Like, and then uh, Chris Hell says, "Lily, please tell Kimberly hello for me. I love her so sampler kits." Mm -hmm. um, and she also said, "I starch like Kimberly, but someone told me that starching attracts bugs. Have either of you heard of this?" I've heard it, but it's never been a problem for me. I just barely started starching <laughs> because I'm not. I'm just not like super particular about things. Yeah. So, but I have started starching recently. So I haven't yeah. noticed it, but I've come yeah. into it. So I haven't had any issues. I mean, I've been doing it forever, like for a long time. Um, I feel like I care more about it being accurate and like getting a pretty result than if in like 20 years it goes bad. I'll probably have a different quilt by then that I care yeah. about. I guess I'm like more. Like, I would rather it be perfect at first, and then I'll probably get tired of it and won't care. Yeah, and I think it depends, like, the kind of quilt you're making. If you're making, like, an art quilt for a wall or something, you definitely yeah. would think different than if you're making, like, a like a throw quilt or a bed quilt or something. So, yeah. but I live in a place with a lot of bugs. So, yeah, I haven't noticed Texas, any bugs. So, yeah. <laughs> we have a ton of bugs. Yeah, we have oh bugs, my gosh. too. Yeah. So hot. Um, and then to wash fabric before sewing or not, and do the dyes run, and if so, do you have tips for that? I never pre-wash. So one thing you can do um, is, I don't pre-wash, because I starch, and my starch will shrink it. But if you, one thing that you can do, because I used to pre-wash, is before, like if you had this half yard, before you stuck it in the, I don't have a scissor. Can I cut a little piece off? Sure. Let me yeah. show you. So yeah. like, there's some yellow scissors by that piece right there. So like, um, this is what they taught me in like a class like 20 years ago when I first started, because I didn't start then. Is they would say if you like clip like a pretty big triangle off, it will prevent it from raveling as much. Oh. I have no idea if that's true. Um, so when I would pre-wash, I would cut all four corners, and it will shrink when you wash. If it runs. You can just put in um, like retain or retin. What do you call that? Retain. Uh, we sell it. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's a color catcher. Yeah, yeah. color catcher. And um, um, but that was one thing that they. Um, but it will like shred. Like not shred, but it'll like it pulls it'll, apart. Yeah. It'll like the edges. Like when you starch, it shrinks. But you're still gonna have like a pretty edge. Like whatever, whatever this kind of stuff that you have is gonna yeah. be there. But when you wash. This whole thing's gonna be like shredded a little bit. Like you could lose like probably a quarter to half an inch. I yes. Think at least. Um, but you know, it's it's kind of one of those things that I think you should do whatever you like. Like whatever your like comfort level is. Like if you're doing a red and white quilt and you think it's gonna run, then wash it. Like if you're gonna, you know, just do whatever works for you. I don't have time to wash. Um, and I also feel like when you wash. Um, it takes away a little bit of the finish or the stiffness, and so then you really have to iron it. Yeah, because there's like sizing in that, it. Yeah, so there's sizing, the so when you wash the sizing out. But I have a friend that's an amazing quilter, and she pre-washes all her fabric. So, but yeah. yeah, I just, and usually too, I'm dealing with deadlines, a lot of deadlines mm -hmm. between the blog and like getting stuff done for like quilt market and patterns and stuff, so I don't have time. And, and I like it when you wash it after and it shrinks and it gets crinkly. So mm -hmm. I think it depends on what kind of look you want afterwards too. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if you want it to like not move after, then I would for sure <laughs> pre-wash. And what type of batting do you use and can you give name brands? So I like Quilter's Dream Cotton is my favorite. But That's like the premium of the premium is Quilter's Dream. I just sent a quilt off that was for the Mermaid's line 
that um, Natalia Bonner quilted for me and she used wool batting on it and her, she's amazing free motion quilter and it showed off that free motion quilting so beautiful. I had a quilt with a lot of negative space. It was, I, I might try it again, but yeah. I haven't tried it. I usually really. use 80-20. Um, I use Quilter's Dream and then I use the Happy Cloud, which we make. Um, Hobbs is good. Um, I don't, any, I guess my thing is I would never use like 100% polyester or something oh, like yeah. that because it would be so puffy and, um, unless you want puffy, sometimes like, I mean, it, yeah, I, mean, I think it's, it's like for me, yeah. it's just too much, but, um, I like the puffy. Yeah. I think, I really I think there's a place for puffy. <laughs> like I made some like little sleeping bags for dolls with puffy ones yeah. and stuff or it's like funny. It'd be cute. I don't know. I thought it'd be pretty with like a lawn or something. So it was like really light. But mm -hmm. I haven't done puppy in a while. Uh, let's see. How many hours a week do you sew? On a good week, thirty. This week, zilch. I go in phases. So yeah, like because I run like the blogs like a full time business. So it's like a full. It's a full time job for me. So I keep like business hours and stuff. So I go through phases. So the last two weeks I've been sewing because I was getting ready to come here. Yeah. But um, I would say I'm probably like eight to 10 hours a week because I try and have like computer days and sewing days and photography days. So mm -hmm. usually I have like one sewing day a week. So yeah, I was out of town this weekend. So um, yeah none this week but it just depends like there could be a week that I could just sew all week and then weeks that I do like not it's very much yeah. um in stages and I have a quilt that needs to get done and it's like has to get done and so I'm basically well I've been working on it forever and it's one of those ones where I just let it drag out forever yeah so I'm just gonna make myself finish it and once I finish it I know I'll do more because I can do like more creative stuff but I yeah. think I've just been working on this one quilt forever that I'm just like I don't want to like I like yeah. making the blocks. I don't necessarily like putting the setting together. So I just need to get um, like to that part. Yeah. yeah, I have a quilt I was making for my son with like all this like Star Wars fabric and stuff, and it's all different blocks. And I just need to sew it together. And I feel bad he's graduating high school. <laughs> but I, but yeah, I kind of do that too. But like right now, like I sewed for like two weeks straight, like getting ready for all this, and then now I'm going to go back and have like a lot of stuff to photograph and a lot of computer stuff to catch up on. So I probably won't be able to sew for another. It'll probably be two weeks before I get back in there again. So, uh, let's see. And lots of people were kind of saying like, I would love designers to this kind of fabric or that kind of fabric. Oh, okay. um, a lot of the debate is, um, some people want more fabrics for boys and other people are like, like pirate fabrics tend yeah. to be for boys. Like, can we get pirate fabrics for girls? And so that's the conversation happening on YouTube right so now. I, yeah. I try and think, cause I have boy girl twins. So usually when I design fabric, I do try and think in those terms and everybody's different too. Cause like my son wears pink shirts and doesn't care about that kind of yeah. stuff. So I do kind of like with like the dog print, there's one that is like light blue. Not that one's got some like pinky color, but there is one in there that I made sure it was like navies and where is it? Oh, this one. Nope. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So this one is just like pretty much like red, white, and blue. So I just made sure I threw something in there so that they could, depending on what you like. But I do try and like pay attention to that. And I try not to do like specific, like boy or girl, but like the mermaids. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to draw a merman. So they are and mermaids. I, and I feel like it's very different now. Like yeah. boys wear pink, whereas yeah. like 10 years ago, boys didn't like I could make a quilt that's like got girly stuff. My kid, my boys would be like, give me that quilt. Like, yeah. I think it's different now. And like, my kids, they'll take any kind of yeah. quilt, anything. They'll fight over any quilt. I don't care. Like, it could be a ditch of sitar, floral, red and white. And they'll be like, give me that quilt. Yeah. Well, even my oldest daughter, like when she was first born, I was like, I wasn't like a huge like Barbie doll fan, but I didn't care about my sister loved Barbie. So she gave her a Barbie doll and like, she loved like all the pink and stuff like that. And then, a, you know, and then my other daughter just likes all the colors. And so I just, I think it depends on the personality of the kid. Yeah. And, and I think there's like a lot out there now, like yeah. now more than ever, there's way more company, fabric companies and way more fabric designers yeah. and um, the industry is healthy, I would say. So you get a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I have like some like friends, like if I was to make like a quilt for a baby boy, they don't want anything besides like a plaid, a stripe or a polka dot. So it doesn't matter. So mm -hmm. it just, everybody kind of has. Mm -hmm. things they like so all right and we've only got time for a few more questions 
Uh, but we have two more new YouTube members. Yay, thank you. Bobby Weaver and Denise Fells. Welcome to the group. Uh, let's see. I already asked that one. Oh, uh, just a tip from Enjoy MJK. Uh, they said the issue with bugs and starching is when you use potato based starch. So if you use something modern like Best Press, oh. you should be fine. So that's good to know. That makes sense. It has food in it. Um, and Kimberly, have you ever considered making your own fabric line? No. I think it would be, um, like, if I designed fabric for one company, then another company is going to get mad, and that's <laughs> not really, like, I just like to use everybody else's fabric. You know, like, I don't really, yeah. I want to do books. I like the books. Um, I like the design. I like more of the what you do with the fabric, I guess, more yeah. than the yeah. other. It takes a long time to get to the point that you have something to sew with. Yeah. So it takes away from and the I time. And I think I have stuff. enough on my plate. Like, I think that, like, I am so busy. I, got, I get home at, like, 9 o'clock, guys. Like, last night my daughter, she, like, texted me and she was like, Mom. Like, M-O-O-O-M. And I'm like, okay, something's wrong. And then she called me. She doesn't ever call me. She's like, oh my gosh, I spilled fruit juice. I'm like, first of all, you don't drink fruit juice. Anyway, she has ruined her backpack. So not only does she get out of dance at eight, then Kevin wants food. Like the boys have already eaten, but he wants food, she wants food. Then we're supposed to go to Dick's. And then what do I do? I drive right by Dick's. And she's like, but you forgot. So I have to like turn all the way around, get her backpack. It's like by the time I get home, it's like yeah. nine, 9.30. And I still have emails and I just can't add anything else. But anyway, last night was, quite crazy because I was like how did fruit juice get on your backpack because you don't drink that and she was like well it's just like long story I'm like I don't even want to know yeah they, mine like they're 17 and they still do stuff like that and I was like I thought and they still fight over who gets to sit where in the car yeah, so I was, yeah I don't think it stops <laughs> I was like, and then I'm like can't you just like I don't know I just I get it she's like me she's very OCD she likes things to be a certain way so I get it, and she, but still, I was just like, really? It's like 8.30? Like, really? Really, Emma? Really? She's probably watching. <laughs> she watches in, She watches the live streams in between her like classes, and then she'll tell me, Mom, maybe you should have done this with your makeup, yeah. or, and I'm just like, please stop. Mine do that too. I like, I do Instagram stories, and like for a while, it was really hard for me to start doing Instagram stories with the camera on, because I'm just not used to it. So I would like start doing it and planning and doing it regularly and then starting to feel good about it. And then like we come home, we have dinner at night and like my husband would be like, so I noticed that your camera was wobbling around. And then like my 17 year old's like, mom, you said such and such. And then I think you should have done this and you should have done this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys, <laughs> they're like the worst. That's so funny. <laughs> or they'll make fun of me. And then they're like, message me on Instagram. Like yes. if she's watching this, she's probably like, anyway. <laughs> I'm like, I did mention the fact that you designed the shirt, so, because before she was, <laughs> she was upset with that when I put it on Instagram, so. I'm like, okay. Oh, my God. Yeah. Kids they're... are super, like, I don't know, sensitive or, like, bossy. I think they think that we're kind of, like, at least with mine. Like, I work, like, I've been blogging for a long time and work in social media and stuff, so I think I'm kind of tech savvy, but I think they just think because I'm in my, like, 40s that I'm just dumb with technology, so that's why they have to tell me, like, all the things yeah. I'm doing wrong. Yeah. Because they know better. Yeah. Okay. So in the dog print of the fox fabric line, yeah. um, Kimberly mentioned that piggy. there's no piggy. So what kind of dog is piggy? He's a pug. Oh, pugs are hard to draw. <laughs> I love him. He's so, he's so stinky. You know what? He needs a bath today. So Emma, if you're watching when I get home, I hope he has had a bath. She'll actually bathe him. That's um, but yeah, he's, yeah. So, yeah. Piggy so, didn't make the cut. So, this is what made it. So, I did, like, think this through because it was, like, inspired loosely by the Fox and the Hound <laughs> Disney movie. Um, so, I have a Brittany. So, this so this one is, is it right here? Yeah. So, that one is actually my Brittany. Like, I looked at him and drew him. And then um, English Springer Spaniel, uh, Dotson. Corgi. Corgi. And a German Short Hair Pointer. Pointer. So it just kind of came down to, because if you look at it too, like you're looking at three colors. So some dogs you just can't draw with only three colors because they need some sort of like distinctive marking. Oh, and there's a, there's a beagle, a beagle. But um, 
yeah. Yeah, so it's just like kind of just depends on like what it looks like after you draw it <laughs> too. Yeah. So I had more dogs, but not all of them made the cut just because of that. So. I have little dachshunds, so I'm like... Yeah, my mom has a dachshund, yeah. and then they have a Karen Terrier, and they're mad that I didn't put the Karen Terrier on there, but they didn't have the Karen Terrier when I drew the line, so... <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Actually, they did. Sorry, I just realized they did, because now they're going to, like, message... Someone's going to message you, because I'm sure they're oh, watching, and they're going to tell me that they did have a Karen Terrier yes. at the time. That's funny. Karen Terrier's all one color. I couldn't draw it, so... <laughs> I don't even know what kind of dog that is. It's the, um, so we had them all growing up, this Toto from Wizard of Oz, it's a Karen Terrier. Oh. Okay. See if it's Disney, is that Disney? It is Disney. Wizard no. of Oz is not Disney. Okay. Warner well. Brothers? Yeah, I feel like, yeah. I don't know. I don't watch I know movies. it was like in the 30s, it was like, because I took a film class in college, it was like one of the first color, like yeah. full color movies. Yeah, like yeah. I have a thing, I don't watch movies, yeah. movies, like ever, like. I love movies, that's like uh -uh. one of my favorite things. Mm -mm. Love to watch movies. Yeah. And then I like to go like read all the trivia about it and. I don't know. Like, like if I go to the movies with my kids, I'll usually just go to sleep. Really? Uh -huh. <laughs> I actually, we went to a movie on Thanksgiving and I fell asleep because I was so tired from cooking and then it was a terrible movie. So or I like asleep. stay awake but like close my eyes and just like, okay, I don't know, I just don't like, if it's not real or like a documentary or like whatever, I just don't like have any interest. See, my husband reads a lot and he reads only nonfiction and I only read fiction, so it's like the same thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> also, everyone's correcting me, MGM. Oh, MGM. MGM, okay. Oh my goodness. I think they I have Wikipedia. We don't have Wikipedia. Like, we run video. I feel like it was like 1929, 1930. It was like right around. Then. So I'm sure they'll correct me for that too. But I remember yeah. in film class, it was one of the it ones was we studied. So. Yeah, so Emma, like recently, she was like, Mom, did you know that when Walt Disney died, he froze his body? Oh, I've heard that That's before. That's a theory. And I was like, I did. And I was like, I don't know if it's. So she was asking me if it's real. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. No, he is I buried. He is, he is buried. Okay, I've heard that one before too. That he wanted to like come back and all that stuff. But I don't know. Sometimes she comes up with random things, and she's like, "Well, you know, like it's on the internet." And I'm like, "Oh, oh so it must be true then." <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so it was like she's like eating dinner, like after dance. Like she makes herself these like crazy custom salads, and she's like randomly asks that, and I'm like, "Like I'm just walking through the kitchen, and she's like, just like, come from? is Disney on? I, you know, is Disney Frozen?'" I'm like, "No idea." <laughs> That's really funny. Okay, last question. Um, can you guys give us a sneak peek of what we can expect with the videos we filmed today? Oh, so yeah, so we have pillow project zipper bag. Are these are gonna be super. These are super cute, and these would work with the con jolly method. I'm gonna show you on Friday with like putting your fabric in it. Um, let's yeah. see the first quilt. The reading the, pillow. The big quilts. And then we've got the reading pillow. And the tote back. So, and then yeah. the the this uh, the quilt along is going to be a soup like five or six videos because she goes in detail by row and then she even has a finishing video to give you tips on how you put the sashing and how you connect all the blocks. Mm -hmm. um, and the bag. Where's the bag? Well, we have it a second ago. Did it get thrown? Oh my gosh, the bag. Oh, it's at the bottom. Yeah. It's there the we go. Sorry, our floor is clean. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna do the bag next. That's why we have to go. We're gonna go and we're gonna film the bag. Yeah. Alright guys. So thanks guys and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for cross stitch and I will see you at 9 a.m. on Friday for Con Jolly Method.